Have you had enough of 2021 yet? <laughs> I sure have. <laughs> Welcome everyone, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and I won this wonderful hat a few weeks ago at a trail race with its inadvertent commentary of the year. <laughs> um, the people who run the race know what it means. It's a running gag with this whole series of races. But yeah, like I said, it is a bit of a commentary in the past year. 2021 was not the most amazing year on record, but there were a few good points. So I've got five awesome things to talk about from this past year. The first four are just kind of in a random order, the things that I thought were really cool. And the very last one was above and beyond the best part of 2021 for me. So let's get started with this list. Coming in as a late entry into the list because I was stuck in COVID jail for a couple days, I actually ended up buying Halo Infinite and playing the single player campaign and it is actually a heck of a lot of fun. Well, the story does not pick up exactly where Halo 5 left off, granted Halo 4 and 5 are a bit of a cluster when it comes to the story, Halo Infinite is a sequel to those games, it just jumps ahead in the storyline and you kind of have to piece together what happened between the two games and stuff that happens throughout the campaign. From a gameplay perspective, it's actually a combination of classic Halo with elements of an open world game like Fallout or similar things like that where you have a main storyline you're following along, but you've also got all sorts of cool side quests. You can jump off and take care of those things and learn a little bit more about what's going on and tackle those things in any order you want. And also, because it's a bit of an open world game, you don't have to actually fight everybody. You can walk around in certain areas or you can sneak around enemies and things like that. As for the multiplayer, well, it's Halo multiplayer <laughs> with connection issues. <laughs> if you enjoy Halo multiplayer, Halo Infinite multiplayer is basically the same thing. You'll probably enjoy that. If you didn't like Halo multiplayer, there's not a whole lot new here in terms of, you know, a multiplayer experience for Halo. Next up on this list is this authentic Japanese-made pole saw. Now I do some woodworking and I talk about it a little bit every now on this channel, but I finally got one of these this year and it's absolutely incredible. It's above and beyond my most favorite hand tool so far. It's got sides for both, um, this is the cross cut side over here I believe, this is the rip cut side. And it's ability to just basically do precise, clean, fast cuts to even very dense hardwood is really amazing. So if you do woodworking and don't have one of these things yet, definitely get one. And be sure to get one that's actually authentically made in Japan, not some sort of non-Japanese ripoff, because there's definitely a very high quality to these particular saws. This one came, I believe, from Rockler Woodworking. So next up is this guy right here. I guess, oh, <laughs> I guess it was already primed. This thing here is the Dart Zone Max Striker. It was a Target exclusive. And this guy is basically what you call, I guess they call it a quote, pro level Nerf Blaster. It's basically more powerful, a little bit more dangerous than the typical kind of toy you think of when you think of Nerf compatible blasters. Of course, it's not actually made by Nerf because this company does a lot better job of Nerf Blasters than Nerf does. But, and yes, I know people are going to point out, well, Walmart had an exclusive version of something like this last year. But you know what? I don't really like Walmart. It's so bright and painful in there. They're fluorescent lights. It reminds me of like some dystopian government sci-fi re-education center when I walk into that place. So the fact that I get something cool like this off the shelf at Target is definitely a nice change of pace. Now, of course, this guy shoots a lot harder, is deadly accurate, and of course you really don't want to use it around kids. But if you don't have anything like this and love Nerf Blasters, it's a fun little gizmo to buy. Then on the tabletop game front, I got a miniature from Warcaster Neo Mechanica. Now this game came out in 2020, but it wasn't until this year where I got enough pieces to actually play a large scale game, and it is so much fun. Now how this game works out is very different than say Warhammer 40,000 or Star Wars Legion which are basically list builders to where you try to kill your enemy as fast as possible. Because you have constant reinforcements in Warcaster Neo Mechanic of this whole void gate system, the game becomes all about battlefield control and kind of taking you away from the individual combat actions and having you to think about large scale strategic actions and it's so much fun because of that. You don't have to really worry too much about it if you blow just one random crappy dice roll because you won't lose the game because of that because there's so many other things going on 
And you have to think at a such a higher level than that, that individual combat actions don't matter, and it's so much fun. Every game that I've played so far, it comes down very close to the end. I haven't had a situation where I felt the guy's really outmatched early on in the game where you can feel that way sometimes with like these list builder games like 40k or Star Wars Legion. So if you haven't played Warcast or Human Mechanica, I highly recommend it. It is a very different game and that's what makes it absolutely awesome. For the last thing that was awesome about 2021 and what was above and beyond the best part of the year for me, I had to get on some of the gear. And for all your benefit, I didn't put on my triathlon shorts because you shouldn't be wearing those things outside of a race or training situation because let's face it, they're really awkward. <laughs> but yes, above and beyond, the best part of the year for me was the sport of triathlon. Now, I've been a competitive runner for over 10 years now, and this is the first year I kind of accidentally joined a Ironman triathlon team. And it was just so much fun. The combination of swimming, biking, and running all at once, doing the training for those things, was just incredible. I never thought I would enjoy swimming and biking so much, and that's why I never got in the triathlon earlier, even though I had bought some of the gear for it. But yeah, I mean, I'm faster than I've ever been, even not just doing dedicated running. I'm healthier and fitter than I've ever been doing this sport and I met an amazing bunch of people. I joined the Hope Water International team, and I'm looking forward to competing next year in this sport. And if you're looking for some sort of awesome thing to do for exercise, consider triathlon. I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you want to compete at the highest levels, it's a lot of money. But if you just want to get out and do like a sprint or super sprint, get yourself a pair of triathlon shorts. You've probably already got a bike, bike helmet, some goggles, and maybe a few other things you probably already have laying around and give the sport a try out. It's just, I think what I like about it more than just pure running is there's a lot of variety in the training because you are doing swim training and bike training and you can do some other things too like tossing some weight lifting or whatever you may want to do. That's all perfectly valid. Whereas with running or even like dedicated lifting training, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You got a lot of variety here. And because it's generally done in a team format, there is a social aspect of triathlon that you don't really necessarily get. Well, you can with running if you want to be part of a run club, but it's nice to have a group of people who are also dedicated about trying to just be awesome, being the best athletes they can be too. So that's that's whole, you know, the whole social aspect, like I said, is a little bit different than other sports, and it's been a lot of fun. So next year, I'm looking forward to doing my crazy eight month long training regimen. <laughs> Because I might have signed up for an Ironman in September. So, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And I'll definitely be talking a little bit more about that from time to time on this channel. Following my progress along as I get ready for Ironman Michigan. A 70.3 mile triathlon in September. Well, that's enough of talking about 2021. Let's take a look at what's coming up for 2022. Finally, after a few years here, I'm finally gonna get my next expansion for Legends of the Caladagia, Fractured Empire out. So look forward to that in the not too distant future. I've also been cobbling together a Kickstarter that I'm planning to launch soon here. I got, this is one of the final pieces. This is the Griffin Hover Tank, and here's one of the final test pieces. This is the Archer MLRS. It's gonna be a series of three FDM supported, 3D printed, minimal support sci-fi vehicles you can use for whatever game you want. And so this should be out not too far off into the new year. Now for something that I'm assuming will be on 2022's list of awesome things. They're augmented reality goggles where in the view plate right here, you're gonna see your stats in terms of like your pace, your time and distance swam and things like that. And it can link up to my watch even for open water swimming. So it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> and I look forward to training with these, like I said, for the Ironman in a later next year. <laughs> all right, guys. So once again, I'm Jason. Thank you all for watching. Hope we had a Merry Christmas. Have a happy new year. And I'll see you in 2020 on the tabletop. Wait, I say 2020. Shoot. Oh, that's not a good start. I'll see you in 2022 on the Tabletop Battlefield.